All right, Dynasty and Infamous are getting ready to battle it out for first place in the challenger bracket. I am here with Brad McCurley. You guys have fought to be in this position for a long time. You're already bumping up to champions, but you want that first place. Now, you've been playing really strong, but you did lose to Dynasty in a prelim match. What happened during that match that kind of lost it for you? Um, you know, it was just a number of little things that added up. Uh, I think we won the first 10 seconds of every single point, um, beating them on the breakout, and then just kind of dropped the ball. Um, I don't know if, if that's credited to, you know, us playing challengers teams and having to play dynasty, so we're not able to <laughs> get away with things that we were getting away with against the other guys. So it, but it was good for us, you know, it woke us up and it, it gave us the information that we needed to tighten everything up and do what we got to do to come out here and win this game. What were the little things that if you drop here on this field layout, it can blow the whole point for you? I mean, either of these sides are very easy to, or not very easy, but very shootable on the break. Um, and it's generally three going to the snake side. Um, so if you're able to get a quick kill off that Dorito side, you're not two on one in that situation. Um, so that was the, a lot of the times we'd put ourselves in those high body situations where we'd be up on them on one side or the other, and we wouldn't be able to close it out. We'd get dinked out here or there, and then all of a sudden they're able to bring it back to even bodies and to change the whole game. Uh, you and Dynasty have some history. There's a little bit of a rivalry di there. Does that help motivate you even more to get this win? Of course. I mean, that always does. We have a good history with these guys. Um, a lot of bloodshed on both sides. Uh, most recently in our most previous win in the Champions Division in Dallas. So we played them in the semifinals and they were almost able to come back in miraculous fashion like they did a year before. And, you know, having to stand there and watch Oliver dance in front of our pits like they just got the win definitely pisses all of us off. And that showed in that overtime point, and that's still carrying on to this game, for sure. So if there is a win for you, are we going to see you dancing in front of their pits at the end? It's not like that. We'll be dancing, for sure, but <laughs> probably not in front of their pits, because we're better than that. All right. We will see who's going to get first place here coming up in the challenger bracket, Dynasty versus Infamous. You don't want to miss it. Bounce off the neck.
There's so much, you know, random chance and occurrence in our game, and that's I feel like that's one of the big factors. What kind of paint are you shooting uh, against the other team? What kind of paint are they shooting against you? When you clip someone in a jersey or when you just clip a mask, you want that ball to explode and leave as much as possible. So it's a very fine balance between brittleness and accuracy when it comes to paint. Oh my gun. I just don't want to put a really good lane out there and put the extra effort to try and shoot someone and have it bounce. Teams have won and lost tournaments based on what kind of paint they're shooting. It happens all the time. The fill is always very important. You know, they have great fill. When it breaks on people, you know, we don't want it to rub off when someone slides. So we're, we're looking for paint, we're looking for consistency, and we want it to mark really well. GI Paint offers the best in both worlds. You know, we know that when we go to the tournaments, we've got the best paint, we've got the best variety of paint, and uh, you know, no matter what the weather throws us, we've, we've got the best paint to shoot. And if every ball that you shoot is going to break on the guy, you're going to win tournaments. Um, when we're trying to select uh, paintballs for a tournament, basically we're looking for a, a perfectly round shape, a nice brittle shell, and, and a great fill that marks and is not easy to wipe off. To me, having a good paintball is probably the most important piece of gear on the field. I like getting the most brittle stuff I can possibly shoot through my gun. You look at all the good pro teams, they're good at shooting people on the break. And if you can shoot people on the break, you're more than likely going to win, and that takes good paint. At our level, when the, the tiniest mistake you pay you pay dearly for, that that's something that, that, that gives you the upper hand if they're not shooting you know, as superior paint. Shooting a good paintball can definitely relate to a lot of the success that you have, especially in a pro division. I mean, the last five World Cups, I think since inception, have been the winners, the pro division has won with GI paint, so I think that probably says enough about the, the quality of their paint. Justin Cornell, Zane Yakovic, Grayson Goff, Ryan Brand, Zach Yakovic, Skull Roberts, Randy Stanzak, Justin Rabikoff, I play for Edmonton Impact, I play for San Antonio X Factor, and I shoot GI Sports Imperial 5 Star Paint.
welcome back here. Last game of the 2014 PSP World Cup. I'm Matty Marshall with Todd Martinez and Chris Lasoya. So here is the situation. Los Angeles Infamous and San Diego Dynasty competed in the semifinals. They won those games. Dynasty took down Aftershock in a crazy match, man. If you didn't get a chance to watch that yet on your pay-per-view DVR, definitely go back and watch it because it was insane. And then Los Angeles Infamous took down a very strong Seattle Thunder to make it to this match right now. So in what would normally be a Champions Division finals matchup, we've seen that before. Right now, we're watching San Diego Dynasty take on Los Angeles Infamous. Both these teams have worked their way back into the Champions Division for 2015, but who is going to win this World Cup and reign triumphant in the Challengers Division for this event? We're about to find out. Dynasty on your right, Infamous on your left. Who's going to win this match? We'll see. Wow, both teams getting out five alive. Heads up paintball right now. Brandon Short shooting down the wire. Oh, taking out, who is that? The number three, Drew Templeton for Infamous. And here comes Brandon Short. Just gonna, oh, he's gonna go to work on Infamous right now. You know, Brandon Short has been a tempo setting player for San Diego Dynasty all season long. And he's now past the 50 yard line in the snake. He got paintball famous and made a name for himself. Uh oh, he might have just got dinked out though. Wow, how did they drop that shit on, or that shot in on him right there? I don't know, but nice shot right there. Good for LA Infamous. But he that was even right now, and looks like, yep, San Diego Dynasty makes it bump up the Dorito side. So 19 10, still, you know, tons of time. We're just getting going here. Both teams dropping a body. Oliver Lang, Yosh Rao, Ryan Greenspan, and Tyler Harmon on the field right now for San Diego Dynasty, still alive. It's Damian Ryan, or, uh, Bobby Avilis. Kevin Kelly Rudolph and Zach Patient on the field right now for Infamous. And there's Oliver Lang getting in the snake to the 50 right there. Keep going all the way. Heads oh. up paintball with Brandon, I'm sorry, Bobby Avilas and Damian Ryan. 50 move on the far side of the field, Todd. Yeah, Oliver Lang right now all the way to the end of the snake on Infamous's side. Gonna make it real tight in there because Ryan Greenspan's still in that snake side corner and he can pound the outside of every bunker that Infamous is in right now. It's going to get really tight. Question is, who is Oliver going to go after first? He's lining up to shoot at Bobby Avilas. And he's playing real tight in there right there. You can see right hand portion of your screen, Oliver Lang. And Bobby Avilas worried about him. Goes and back and forth, D there side, goes snake Zach side. Patient down the Dorito side, getting shot out. So just three bodies left alive now for Infamous. Tyler Harmon coming on the creep to Infamous' the side of the field, but he gets picked off. That was Damian so, Ryan. Still three on three right now, but Oliver Lang still sitting patiently waiting, and he's going to see Kelly Ooh, Kevin Rudolph he, across the field and just barely misses his pack. Yeah, Todd, he almost got that shot across field on his pack, but missed it. Comes right back, though, and gets the wire here, and now he's trying to put the hurt on Bobby Avilas, though, putting the pressure on him. You can see he's just shooting, making sure that Bobby's not going to try to come around there and run him down. He does have a back player, though. Ryan Greenspan's right behind him and watching right over Oliver Lang. But I can see Bobby trying to put in put in um, Ryan Greenspan and then going and getting Oliver. Um, that's pretty much his only savior, otherwise he could be sitting there dying. Well, it's a close one right now, it's three on three, and yeah, everyone's looking at Oliver. All three guns, and now uh, it looks like that Damian Ryan's gun goes back toward that D side of the field, so I think guy, that person who has the ball is Yosh Rao. Yosh Rao on that D side of the field. D side's completely, pretty much completely blown open. Yosh is in that back corner bunker. So Yosh Rao just trying to live back there. On that Dorito side of the field, he's the only body, but he's also the widest body for either team. Sitting well, in that corner, Callie Rudolph playing straight ahead. Well, Todd, think about it. Ryan's got to watch over Oliver because Oliver's way up there. So if Ryan has to come off to shoot at any other guy and not watch over Oliver and watch Bobby, well, that puts Oliver at risk. So now it's up to Yosh Rao to try to find a way to get up this D side. It's a big gap, though. And from, from the spot that he's at, he's probably trying to seize up the variables right now and try to think, okay, well, is it better for me in this situation to push up? And Yosh has closed out countless, countless points in games over the years for Dynasty and Ironman before that a long ago. So now here comes the move. Damian Ryan and Oliver tucks in. So now Damian Ryan and Oliver is just going to crawl real low. And I think Damian just got clipped by, by uh, Yosh Rao, and he did. What a shot by Yosh Rao. Yeah, what, that was a great shot. Clutch play right there. Here comes Bobby Avilas. And Buddy. here comes Ryan flying in the snake, and Oliver's trying to argue that he feels he shot, and that's going to get Oliver a penalty. So, you know, he, this, we saw this at the last event, and Ryan's going to sprint 
Very smart by Ryan Greenspan, who looks fast coming off that knee injury. Sprints back in there, so now it's a one-on-one -on -one situation here. Yosh Rao against Kevin Kelly Rudolph, and Yosh is probably figuring out what it is, but it's kind of a mental mistake by that. I could see why Oliver wanted to do that, because you know he felt he traded out with Bobby. I mean, what did you see from here? Do you feel it? I thought it was almost a bang-bang play. Yeah, it's so bang-bang, it's, it's kind of hard. They're only about five feet between the two bodies. But, you know, right now you just want to get up and get off the field. Because it, it doesn't matter. I mean, even if Oliver's alive or dead, it does not matter. It's 2-on-1 regardless. Yeah, Ryan Greenspan is then sitting in the end of the snake, and he can tee off on Cali Rudolph. But then, you know, Ryan Greenspan going to get pulled. But now Cali Rudolph, he is playing a one-on-one. -on -one, but in 20 seconds, Ryan Greenspan is going to come back on the field. So this is one of those situations we were talking about earlier. you got to close you know, the gap. With the aftershock game, do you blow the horn and – start off the next break five on four or do you let the body come out of the box because it's gonna be a tough one-on-one -on -one. if Cali doesn't shoot Greenspan coming out of the box it's gonna be a one-on-two situation and so now Ryan comes out of the box and it looks like but Cali shoots Yosh wow. from there but Ryan takes out Cali so Cali was able to get the shot on Yosh but not able to get a shot on Ryan I think I don't know Ryan's asking for a check on the right hand side of his pack and he is clean, so that's a heads up play by Ryan. As soon as he saw Oliver get that talking penalty, he ran and sprinted immediately to start that clock on that one minute minor penalty. He gets in the box, he starts looking at the one on one. Yo, smartly, he's, uh, uh, he slow plays it. And uh, even though he did get that drop on an advancing Cali Rudolph, uh, great, amazing work by the consummate veteran Ryan Greenspan. Yeah, I mean, almost a big play right there by Kelly Rudolph was able to shoot. It was close. Yosh Rao, but Ryan Greenspan came out just in time, took a good angle on Kelly, cut him down as he came through. So, well, Kelly, I think Kelly actually lost Ryan Greenspan. Look at this replay right here, Todd. Yeah, here's the breakout of Drew Templeton going all the way to the snake. He's going to get in there, but then Brandon Short is going to appear all of a sudden. And once Drew Templeton takes a look out, he's going to get shot in the face. So Drew Templeton shaking his head on that mental mistake. Brandon Short right there. Oh. Maybe Drew Templeton got shot from across the field. I think he did get shot from the inside. Here's that trade out right there. Here's where Oliver is talking. I don't know. That looked pretty bang bang. There's the ref telling him to get out. He says, I don't know. What am I doing? I also think they're probably making Oliver pay a little bit for the mouthing off that he was doing in that last and that which is understandable I, I get it you know well, let's get a ref update here wait a minor penalty assessed to player number two for dynasty interference talking after eliminated so well at least the penalty did not hurt dynasty so dynasty is going to go up one to zero here because of some heads up uh, understanding of the game situation by Ryan Greenspan and uh, now coming out to play this next one is all it's going to be Oliver Lane, Kyle Spicka, Glenn Takamoto, go, Alex Frazee, and right yeah, that's the squad, Kyle. Let's yeah, go. that's the squad. And then for uh, Infamous, it's going to be Zach Wake, Corey Bornstein, Brad McCurley, Bobby Villas, and Jason Bornstein. So this is the point right now. Don't want to let Dynasty start running points away like Art Chaos did to Tampa Bay Damage. So can Infamous, yeah, it looks like they're pushing aggressively on the D side of the field, able to get into D1. Brad McCurley shying towards the snake side. You're looking at Dynasty on your screen right now. And it looks like a body drops early. It's one of the Bornstein brothers, Corey Bornstein, for Infamous. So first to strike, San Diego Dynasty. Five players alive for them, and they get a player in the snake. So the snake battle is now matching up here. Yep, and once again, Zach Wake gets shot out of that snake side corner. So once again, Dynasty is going to have full control of this wire as they have Alex Frazee in the snake side corner. He can stand up over the top and protect Kyle Spicka, who is in snake one. Bobby Avilas, the closest player to Brad McCurley. And, and Todd, it looks like the wild man Blake Yarber is in the 50-yard line on the D side for San Diego Dynasty. Well, he's going to be able to wrap around here and try to put some of that pressure on that back center bunker and make it real small. Now, here comes Blake Yarber, aggressively pushing forward. Blake all the way past the 50-yard line now. Gun shifted to him, and then Spicka moved up on that snake side, and then next, at this point, goes to San Diego Dynasty. You know, I got a chance to do a podcast with Blake Yarber, talk about his travels this year. My God, man, he had an incredibly interesting year. Almost died getting gored by a bull and, uh, in France, and then, went, and then after that, he still went running with the bulls in Spain and hiked Hadrian's Wall in England. So uh, Blake Yarber, man, he's, a, he, he's an awesome guy. So here's the game matchup right now, Infamous versus Dynasty. 
got to give the advantage uh, to San Diego Dynasty. They've spent way less time down in the Challengers division than Infamous had, and Dynasty beat Los Angeles Infamous when they played in the prelims, seven to three. So right now, 13.36 to go. Two to zero is that score, and we're gonna be right back. Game brought to you by Planet Eclipse, sponsor of San Diego Dynasty. So here we go. Also Empire sponsors Infamous. They're the main Empire Factory team. So on the breakout here, as Dynasty and Infamous split screen breakout, both teams five strong right away. And a little bit more conservative breakout for San Diego Dynasty. They didn't send anybody far up on the D side, and Infamous has a player into D1. Right here, comes Kyle Spick already getting the snake, but following up right away, quickly getting the snake. That's number 32, Bobby Avilas. And you see Dynasty filling that back corner, down the wire, trying to get a shot and conserve. Oh, Damian Ryan taking the walk, guys. Trying to make it outside to help out Bobby. Yeah, Drew Templeton out there in the snake side corner. Infamous finally getting the body out wide. But Bobby Avilas now in snake two. He's tucked down there tight. Only Damian Ryan walking off the field from this side. Oliver Lang making the bump out from the big Dorito in the back center. Out to the snake insert bunker. So three bodies stacked heavy over here. Alex Fragi, Oliver Lang, and Kyle Spica on the snake side for San Diego Dynasty. Kyle Spica looking inside. Trying to get across shot the field as well. Bobby Vilas laying down, trying to contest Kyle Spica for moving up. Look for him to make the move to the 50. And there it is. Now Bobby Avilas in that 50 snake. He's in there alive. He's got Drew Templeton behind him. A long whip. Over on that Dorito side in Dorito 1. Callie Rudolph and Zach Patient. Callie Rudolph working with Zach Patient. Tyler Harmon taking a walk in the cross far side of the field in that Dorito side corner, Matty. Yep, so they finally yeah. get a kill off that Dorito side. And here comes Oliver Lang standing up, and it looks like he's going to get, I'm sorry, no, Kyle Spica standing up, and then Oliver Lang filling in right after him. So Spica just got blown apart, and I don't know if that was the move, man. Like, it looked like Spica just stood up and took it right there. Yeah, he was. He didn't put too much thought into that, I don't think. So now Oliver Lang, though, right behind him, man. Oliver Lang is, yeah, he did get a penalty for talking after hit, but which has been a plague for him for years. Uh, but, you know, he's just continuing to play well over here as the two on the snake side of the field. Alex Fragi dueling it out from corner to corner with Drew Templeton. There's Bobby Avilas on your screen. Oliver Lang in that snake knuckle. Alex Fragi, who just came on the inside right there. Big shot down the wire. He's got some shoot the balls back at Cali Rudolph in the Dorito corner before he can wrap. Bobby Avilas getting up to a knee. Looks like he's thinking about making a move. Dynasty with only three bodies left alive. Infamous with four. 10-40, almost to the halfway point of this game. Dynasty with a 2-0 lead. And Dynasty. there's a shot. He's looking across the field. That's where Tyler Harmon came out of. There's one more guy who filled out there now. Yes. He's out Rao. Rao, yes. So, I think... Uh, the move to be made should come from the Dorito side of Infamous. And there it goes. Zach Patient dives into Dorito 2. Yeah, good call, Todd. This is a big point for Infamous right now. They do not want to let San Diego Dynasty go up on them. 
With uh, Frazee Lang and Rao left, two of the core veterans on San Diego Dynasty looking at Avilas, Rudolph, Patient, and Templeton. Uh, and now actually taking the walk is Alex Frazee getting shot across the field by Zach Patient. Good call by that, Todd. Well, so right now, Oliver is battling out. He's trying to catch Bobby Avila slipping, but Bobby's not slipping. Bobby in there at the 50-yard line and knows he has a one-body advantage. I'm sorry, a two-body advantage right now. Under nine minutes and 30, about 34 seconds to play here. The Bobby Avilas on your screen, closer to you, and then there's you can see Oliver Lang, just the yeah, just his goggles and his gun. Oh, oh and Oliver he finally gets taken out, but looking at four guns is tough for him in there. That's just really kind of a bad spot to be in uh, when you're looking at four bodies. Yeah, so good execution right there, good high body execution by LA Infamous to be patient. You know that's that's the situation. Yeah, I was talking about earlier, if you've been watching all day, mm -hmm. you know, when you have guys that have been in this situation before, it's easy to see a body drop out of that corner and get excited and go try to run down Oliver Lang right away. But that's the stuff that Oliver Lang understands. That's the stuff that he feeds on. He knows that you're going to want to make that move right away if you're inexperienced. So he's patient. He waits. Bobby Avilas understands that situation as well. He doesn't just get up and go run into Oliver Lang's gun and give Oliver the whole snake and let him crawl down behind Zach Patient in the 50 Dorito and shoot him in the back and open up a game and have everybody up here in the booth yeah. talking about the crazy moves that Oliver Lang does. Smart, patient move right there by Bobby Avilas to wait, let Zach Patient get up the field, put the pressure on. You know, somebody, uh, or uh, Zach Patient makes a good shot in on Alex Frage, and Infamous comes in and closes the game. So we're going to be right back after this. Can Infamous get back in it? Awesome point right there. Two to one's the score. See you in a second. It's the weekend before the final event of the year, and we have 60 cases of paint. Last year at this time, we only had 20, and we didn't even make the cut for finals. But this year, with the money we raised through paintballproshop.us, that's not a problem. Now we have money for practice and events. It's free. Paintballproshop.us. Definitely special shout out to paintballproshop.us, new big sponsor here for PBA. Definitely check them out online. Again, help us. You know, we're doing all we can over here at PBA uh, to, to try to help create something that's that's deserved what the sport deserves. You know, so much amazing battles go down, and uh, we just want to be displaying those battles the best we possibly can, and that's about your support. So thank you very much. Nine minutes and 15 seconds to go here in this Challengers Division final matchup here at the PSP World Cup. Oh, now Oliver Lang has been playing really great. For San Diego Dynasty here, getting shot off the break. So now it's Takamoto, Yarber, Greenspan, and Short to try to maintain this lead for the Los Angeles, uh, from sorry, for San Diego Dynasty. And Infamous, though, hungry to try to put another point on the board here yeah. to tie it up. Callie Rudolph, confirmed kill count leader for the guys on the field right now for Infamous. Two more bodies come off for Dynasty. Looks like Glenn Takamoto off that Dorito side. And then Jason Bornstein goes up and trades with Tyler Harmon as Brandon Short gets shot out of the snake. But looks like there's going to be a penalty assessed on Infamous. Who is it going to be on? Somebody is going to the box. I think it was might have been on Jason Bornstein. Major or minor, Todd? Which flag did you see? I saw a minor it flag. A, it's a minor, yeah. Go well, up in the air. I think that's on Brad McCurley. Considering inf Infamous's problems with penalties in the past, if you're a fan of Infamous, you're very happy that that was a minor penalty. Though it will stay on the clock now, and uh, Infamous is going to tie this up at two, but looks like they're going to have to deal with uh, being down a body. San Diego Dynasty going to be on a power play here. I still haven't seen that. It, uh, the penalty go on the board, though. That it was. It was Brad McCurley. So it looks like a minor penalty on Brad McCurley. Callie Rudolph's doing well right now. He shot out Glenn Takamoto. He's giving him four confirmed kills. They're looking at the pits for Infamous right now. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if they know that Brad McCurley's in the box. Yeah, unfortunately, that penalty is okay. I mean... It is what it is. It's tried up 2-2 now, so 0-0 zero, zero game with 8.28 left in this game. Drew Templeton got pulled. Jason Bornstein traded out. Brad McCurley got the penalty. Drew Templeton got pulled. He still had Callie. Zach Wake, Callie was, on, and Wake. Zach was on their side of the snake when that, when that happened. Yeah, Wake was on their side of the snake. Callie was still alive as well, wasn't he? Did Callie get shot? 
No, okay. Callie was Callie's also alive. Callie is also alive? Yes, sir. Well, let's get an update here from the referee. We had a minor penalty assessed to number 13 for infamous playing on an obvious hit. Yeah, that happened when he was actually in that Dorito in the back side of the field. I saw the ref from the other side of the field throw the penalty, run after Bradley as he was going to the corner, resulting in that minor penalty. So, so. imagine Dynasty blew the horn then before the end of that point. So starting four strong, Damian Ryan out to the snake side corner. Is he gonna get in there alive? Alex Fragey asking for a check on his pack. Brandon Short getting shot. He's walking off the field. Alex Fragey walking off the field as well. So some excellent shooting on the break. For LA Infamous across the field, Yosh Rao getting caught on the fill, as well as Tyler Harmon Dynasty just throwing bodies away left and right right now. Crazy point right there for LA Infamous. Wow. Just so shooting a ton of bodies for San Diego Dynasty. I guess that was Kevin Rudolph from across the field going out to that Dorito side temple, shoots across the field and hits those bodies coming out to the snake side of San Diego Dynasty. Three pack right there for Callie Rudolph stepping up big. And that's, and Todd, that gives him seven confirmed kills in this match. That's it. Callie hey, Rudolph on. came to play here at the World Cup. So now Dynasty's back against the wall. It was just Greenspan, who was the last player left alive there. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go. Infamous scrapping back down and getting in this match. Three to two is the score. We'll be right back. Hey guys, I am in Dynasty's pit right now with Kyle Spucka. You guys had a two point lead there, but Infamous was able to come back. It is three to two right now, they're up one point. What are some things that you guys have seen in the last few points that you need to change up in order to make sure you could get the points from now on? Um, I mean, it's towards the end of the tournament, people are really locking down these lanes, getting those outside kills. So it's really all about uh, diversity and really where you can go differently on the break. Yellow. And uh, basically who's winning those gun battles, you know, it's right now it's about the mistakes. You know, you have two good teams out here right now, so it's about not messing up. It's going to be a close match. We'll see who gets this next point. Back to you guys. Yeah, it is definitely a close match. Three unanswered. 
Gardner saying from Los Angeles Infamous. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go here. Brad McCurley in the box uh, as Dynasty conceded that point on that minor penalty. Miners stay on the board if you lose the point. I'm sorry, if you win the point. So on the breakout here, Oliver Lang now all over the field, up into the center. We have seen him play masterfully up in that center of the field for San Diego Dynasty this season. Yeah, Brad McCurley taking the walk early for LA Infamous. I'm sorry, he's actually in the box. Zach Patient getting shot by Oliver Lang, going up the middle like he's done so well. You can see him on your screen right there in the middle. But taking the snake also, I think that's Brandon Short. Glenn Takamoto jumping into Dorito 2 for Dynasty. Oliver Lang going to come back across, lock off the Dorito side, talk to Glenn. They also have Blake Yarbrough over there in Dorito side corner, so heavy push coming from Dynasty right now on that Dorito side of the field. Brad McCurley comes out of the box, snake side, gets in alive. And Brad McCurley is going to look at that 50 Dorito. To, or, uh, Drew Templeton is going to switch and look at that 50 Dorito now. Try and protect Callie Rudolph. Damian Ryan over here in this snake side corner. He's watching the wire. But Dynasty owns the 50 snake. Dynasty owning all the 50s now. Blake Yarber coming, getting up in the game. Ryan Greenspan in the snake side corner. Blake Yarber and Oliver Lang looking real good here. Guns up, putting heavy pressure on the last players. For Infamous taking a few out, and it's just one body left alive in the corner. It's Damian Ryan. You can hear the Dynasty fans igniting in the stands. And right now, it looks like Dynasty's going to tie it up. And this is one of the better games that we've seen out here, and a perfect point from San Diego Dynasty. Takamoto, Greenspan, Short, Yarber, and Oliver Lang. Everyone's alive at the end of it. So. Nice work by the boys in blue to tie this game up with six minutes and 47 seconds. There's Coach Rusty Glaze, He's done such a great job dealing with Dynasty. Dynasty, not the easiest team to coach uh, because of how seasoned and how successful they've been for the past 14 years. And, uh, but you know, Rusty played with them. He's got a lot of experience. He's highly respected, of course, because he played on so many top teams, doing a great job with Dynasty. Uh, and then are now going to be back in the Champions Division. So is Infamous. So regardless, win or lose, these two teams we were going to see in the Champions Division in 2015 for the first event, and they earned it. Dynasty only spending one of this event down in the Challengers Division and mashed on everybody. But right now, Infamous is trying to send a message. It's like, look, all right, we had kind of a rough year. Yeah, we had a great start to the year, won the first event. But we're now back in the Champs Division, and if Infamous could be Dynasty right here, that would really send them off to the offseason well. Yeah, well, they had they had to come out swinging. Yeah, you know absolutely. they want to get back up in this champions division, which where they belong, you know, rightfully so. But it just goes to show you the level of play out here at the PSP. A million percent, Chris. I mean, it's been such a topsy turvy year. You can look, look, if you go to uh, if you're on the site, you can go to paintballaccess.com. Check out the year in reviews we had for the all the teams that were in the champions division. Um, we're looking at the Challengers division right now, and that should say something. If you have Infamous and Dynasty playing for the Challengers division, the second division, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that alone, I mean, what else do we need to say? Yeah. That's how hard it is here in the PSP. Here you go, Dynasty on your breakout, Oliver Lang. Coming up hard in the middle. Again, doing what works for him. Damian Ryan getting shot in the break. But getting in the snake, you see Oliver Lang Looks like he shot across the field. Here comes another penalty. It's a minor penalty against Bobby, Bobby Avilas. Oh, and Zach Patient getting shot as well off that Dorito side. No bodies left alive for Infamous as Dynasty goes rolling the guns once again. Just blowing Infamous off the field here. Oliver Lang setting the tone early coming up the middle of that field. Getting kills off that Dorito side. Yeah, I know that a lot of teams talked about the middle of this field. You know, in practice, it's tough to get up there. You know, but you know, we've seen a lot of points from Oliver Lang. Yeah, and the throughout only the past couple games we've watched. And Todd, the only person I can think of that really consistently, at least in one particular game, played the center so much and found a lot of success there was Sean Rill from uh, from Baltimore Revo. He was just chopping bodies up in that center. So now maybe he took a page from Oliver Lang's book. Uh, from the beginning part of the season, and now Oliver doing what he does up in the center. And uh, and also, but you know, I mean, Oliver was the thorn in the side, but it wasn't Oliver shooting people. It was the rest of the boys, Greenspan, Yarbor, the rest of the guys out there, and a good team point there uh, for San Diego Dynasty to take a lead. Let's check out this replay here. 
You can see there, Oliver actually made it up to the center before Infamous was able to make it into the snake. And uh, I'm not sure if that was Oliver that got that shot yeah. in on his pack. Yeah. I think it might have been. So, you know, good job by Oliver to get there. Let's check out the rough ref update right now. We had a minor penalty assessed on number 32 for Infamous, playing on an obvious hit. Now we're back in the pits with San Diego Dynasty. There's Yarber, Takamoto. Yeah, and you saw Bobby getting clipped on top of the pack right there as he was coming around the first knuckle and continued to go down to try and get to the 50. Unfortunately, Oliver Lang had the drop on him from the center, A. Eh? So, yeah, still some time left, guys. You know, uh, just under six minutes to go. But Infamous could get back in this match. They send out Templeton, Wake, McCurley, Jason, and Corey Bornstein. Jason is the, uh, he has two confirmed kills. Haven't seen Corey clock in yet. But uh, on the flip side, Dynasty rolling with Yar Yarber, Oliver Lang, Ryan Greenspan, Tyler Harmon, and Brandon Short. 4-3 game in favor of San Diego Dynasty. Six minutes left in this match. Let's see what Infamous has. They can they pull out a quick point quickly before, so. And there goes Oliver back up the middle again. Is he able to get a kill? No. Bringing that gun over to the Dorito side is going to allow Zach Wake to get to the snake on the break, and he's going to peel Oliver Lang apart. Well, you know, fool me once. Oh, well, fool me twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better not fool me again, right? <laughs> Zach Wake getting in that past the 50 snake. He's going to have a free shot on the 50 Dorito as Dynasty advances up the field into that 50 Dorito. Zach Wake getting a check right now. Here comes now. a major and penalty on Zach Wake. He's going to get a major penalty. Oh, uh, and Zach Wake turned around, saw the red flag go in the air. He didn't even complain. He just took a deep breath and exhaled and because Wake has had a lot of problems with penalties in the past. But he's done a real good job of, real, of trying to work on that. So. A little bit of those old demons starting to haunt Zach Wake here in this matchup against Dynasty. And that is going to open up the doors for Dynasty here. But only, I was going to say, only if they're going to have to blow the horn, and they did. So. Well, and God, get in the box. If you're, if you're going to the box, Brad McCurley was pulled on that penalty. He just walks over to the penalty box. Your time doesn't start until you actually get in the box. Good point, Chris. Uh, so only six seconds expires from that Zach Wake major penalty. But what an inopportune moment to get one. And that is going to make Infamous uh, have to play down a body. Dynasty will be on the power play. But good job by Infamous to tie this one up here. So the score is 4-4. Four to four. What a great matchup here in the Challengers Division. Final game here at the PSP World Cup. We're going to be right back. Getting right back in this matchup, all tied up at four apiece. Under five minutes to play here, and Los Angeles Infamous is going to be down a body on that wake penalty here. San Diego Dynasty, five bodies alive. They keep running the same lineup pretty much. And they got Yarber out there, D side, Ryan Greenspan, Yosh Rao, Alex Frazier, and Brandon Short. But losing Damian Ryan is infamous, and then also Brandon Short taking the walk. But Yarber making it to the 50 yard line on the D side of the field, so nice aggressive play. That's what you always see out of Yarber. It's, why Dynasty has them on their team. Well, you gotta, you gotta grind this penalty out, man. You don't wanna go two points down. Hey, Blake has four, confirm, uh, four confirmed kills out there, too. Ryan Greenspan, kill count leader right now for Dynasty. 
Six confirmed kills for him. Yeah, just two bodies left alive for Dynas or for Infamous right now. They got Brad McCurley in the snake corner and Kevin Rudolph over there in that Dorito side temple. Brad or Zach Wake is still in the box. He's going to come out in a minute. But Dynasty, with all the field position, they have four bodies alive. 50 Dorito, Fragi down here in the snake one. Yosh Rao behind him in the snake corner. And Kevin Rudolph going to get shot. Brad McCurley all by himself going to try and just stay alive as long as he possibly can. And that time is going to get cut short right now. Just trying to burn off that penalty. Nobody goes and grabs the flag. <laughs> so Ryan's That's like, gonna give some extra seconds. <laughs> Ryan is over there, clears the field, and uh, try to wait, tries to wave everyone towards him. Realizes <laughs> no one's grabbing the flag, so he's like, "Okay, I'll just go grab the flag myself." But Ryan looking fast right now. Yep. You know, Ryan uh, had a, a partially torn MCL uh, at the at the West Coast Open, and you know that wasn't that long ago. That was six weeks ago. But he, again, healing like the Wolverine. <laughs> and was able to make it back here and then looks fast, playing well. And he's the confirmed hey, kill count leader right now for San Diego Dynasty. Hey, you're down by one, baby. It's time to fucking do it. <laughs> Looking it's like hey, infamous, see? ready to roll here, trying to get back in this match. 326 to go. What a close game, boys, between these two high-powered offenses here. As expected. You know, I'm glad to see them both going back to the champions division. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Can infamous tie it up? I don't know. We'll be right back. Back in the pits, Jason Bornstein on your screen, number 87, his brother's number 80. And heading out to play for Infamous to try to tie this game up is Damian Ryan, Kevin Rudolph. And Kevin Rudolph is the confirmed kill leader for both teams right now in this match. Eight confirmed kills for Cali Rudolph. Zach Patient gonna be out there playing the D side for Infamous, uh, as well as Drew Templeton probably coming snake side here. Zach Wake in that box, 27 seconds left here on this power play for San Diego Dynasty. And still down one body with 27 seconds left on this penalty. Zach Wake still in the box for Infamous, starting with four. And here comes Dynasty on the left-hand side of your screen, Infamous on your right. Uh, losing another player on the break is Infamous. Here comes Oliver Lang, but losing one also, that's yeah. Tyler Harmon. Oliver Lang on your screen right now in that center, but they did lose Tyler Harmon, just like Chris said, on that D side of the field. But Brandon Short, I'm sorry, Kyle Spicka in the snake one for Dynasty. That's going to put pressure on that D side of the field. No one in the snake for Infamous right now. Oh, Kelly Rudolph. Low body over there on the Dorito side. They get Zach Wake out of the box right now. And lose and Kyle Spicka. So Kyle Spicka gets shot. Tyler Harmon shot. Four on three right now but two minutes and 42 seconds left to go. Infamous is gonna have to score a point here to stay in this game. Still lots of time, Ryan Greenspan in that snake side corner. Oliver Lang up in the center A. Glenn Takamoto over on the Dorito side. Oh, referee running in to give Callie Rudolph a check. Mm -hmm. Drew Templeton here in the snake side corner for LA Infamous. There's the double up. Looks like Zach Wake may have just taken a bouncer off the top of his head. Andrew Templeton gonna get into the snake, so that's gonna free up some room, but, you know, Infamous looking kind of bunched up, doubled up in that back center Dorito. There's Damian Ryan right there with Zach Wake trying to keep Glenn Takamoto, who's in the Dorito one, from coming down that side of the field, but you know, Oliver Lang really commanding a lot of attention up there in that A. I'm surprised that Damien hasn't got out of that bunker yet because, I mean, that's, that's a small bunker, you know, especially with one person his size in there, let alone two. And there's a move coming now, outside. Yeah, with a minute and a half left to go in this game. Yeah, it's going to, this is closing moments right here. It's going to come down. Can Infamous 
push up on this snake side of the field. It's open right now. There is one player over here, but it's just Ryan Greenspan. So it's three on four, but Greenspan looking at three bodies on this side of the field. Somebody's got to do something. There's one minute left in the game. So, Oliver Lang. A smart move by Ryan Greenspan. He gets up in a snake one, and that's going to put pressure cross field. And I think he got a shot on uh, who was that? Yeah, Zach Callie Wake Rudolph. Coming Callie out Rudolph of the box. got shot. And then Zach Wegg tried to fill it. He got shot. But Glenn Takamoto gets shot. It's a two on two right now. 52 seconds left to go. Damian Ryan and Drew Templeton looking at Ryan Greenspan and Oliver Lang. Oliver Lang and Ryan Greenspan. Oliver Lang, four kills, six for Ryan Greenspan. And they are going to try to out, uh, hold out here. Just 40 seconds to go. So it's two on two. And Drew Templeton's going to try to come wrap around and get a shot on Oliver Lang. Referee in there checking out Oliver. If he's hit, that might be a penalty. That is going to be a and penalty. That's going to be a minor penalty, which is going to pull out Ryan. Actually, no one to pull because Ryan went to try to trade out with Drew Templeton, which is going to leave the door open for here comes Damian Ryan as the crowd goes wild. And Damian hangs that flag up to tie the game at five with just 15 seconds to play. So more than likely, in fact, almost certain, certainly, that we are going to see an uh, overtime period here. And we could potentially see some one-on-ones to close out the tournament here at the PSP World Cup 2014. Maddie, tell me if you've heard this story before. San Diego Dynasty, LA Infamous, one point game, less than a minute <laughs> left to go. <laughs> Yeah. Are we going to run out the clock? Hey, that game on the, the, the Oliver, no. Well, here's no, the deal. No, we're not going to run out the clock. At the beginning of the year, we saw Oliver Lang and San Diego Dynasty taking on Infamous in a very similar situation. And what happened? Oliver Lang ended up diving that flag in. Uh, didn't end up getting the hang. But I'll tell you what, that was such a good game on YouTube. I believe there's probably around 800,000 views for that game. That's wow. how exciting that game was. The past two Dallas events. Yep. Dynasty and Infamous have played to the final seconds of the game to determine the winner. And here we are once again, Dynasty Infamous for the 2014 World Cup Challengers Division Trophy. We are going to be going to an overtime possibly, but hey, 15 seconds left to go. This is where we see Dynasty try and put together what they've done twice already, a really quick game plan to well, see if they can make something happen. Well, let's look at this replay here. That was Ryan Greenspan trying to make something happen on the dive. Look at that, look at, Greenspan's got such a fluid dive. So there's Ryan Greenspan launching, but it wasn't enough. Damian Ryan was still left alive, and you see traded out with him there, but still trying to get vertical, I'm um, sorry, horizontal <laughs> in order to uh, get in there. So we see the overtime. It's not actually overtime yet. There's 15 seconds left. We're probably going to see an overtime point. But that's what we that's, that's what, what we, 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 that's what we thought last time. That's what we thought last time before that. <laughs> and Oliver Lang, this Dallas, Oliver Lang came within a fraction of a second of hanging that flag. And then that game ended up going to overtime where Infamous ended up winning. winning but it, yep. before we see the conclusion of the game, check out these messages. We'll be right back. This is the Earth. The earth is beautiful. Earth is where we play paintball. It is important to recycle in order to save the earth. Do not recycle custom paintball jersey designs. Get what you pay for. Get a fresh original design at rosalife.com. So we could potentially see an overtime point here in this Challengers Division final matchup between Dynasty and Infamous. Looks like there is a penalty on Dynasty, though. So it might have been like, it was Oliver Lang. Yeah, that's right. Oliver Lang did get that minor penalty. Okay, so Nobody got in the box. So Ryan Greenspan must have traded out with Drew Templeton. Yeah. And then Oliver got a penalty with nobody to pull. Yeah. So 15 seconds. We're going to play it out here. 
And we've been in this situation before with these two teams, like we talked about right before the break. Uh, it was in the semifinals, and actually at the, at the first event, Infamous ended up moving on. They won in overtime. Di Oliver uh, it was heroic, but he didn't get the, the win there. He was like a half second short. But uh, last, uh, so last year, though, Dynasty ended up winning in the semifinals in another one of these close matchups. So uh, this, is, uh, this is one of those rivalries that we just love watching right here. So off the break, Bodies dropping for Infamous in the center. Losing one. Losing, losing two. two. I think they lost, yeah, they lost two. But also Tyler Harmon taking the walk. Oh, there was Brad McCurley getting shot. And that is going to do it. So we're going to head to an over three minute overtime period. And what that means is that if, uh, you know, we, it's Sunday, we have to have a winner. So if that overtime period ends and we have not decided who's won this match, then we will go to one on one shootouts. Yeah, and so with 15 seconds on the clock, only uh, 15 seconds came off that minor penalty. So there's still going to be 45 seconds left on Oliver Lang's penalty going into this overtime point. So that's going to give Infamous a significant advantage off the breakout. But if that game goes longer than 45 seconds, Infamous, depending on what type of position they're in, going to see Oliver Lang come out of that box. So we'll find out, man. It, this is going to be a good one. About a minute and 18 seconds before the start of this overtime point here. 45 seconds on that penalty for Oliver Lang. We're going to be right back. Stick with us. The sun descending in the western sky here at Fantasy of Flight, a little outside of Orlando, Florida. And we are about to watch an overtime point here in the Challengers Division semifinal matchup. San Diego Dynasty, Los Angeles Infamous. Who's it going to be? And on the breakout on, and on the power play, Infamous going real fast and aggressive over here towards the snake side. And I think they got everybody alive. They did. Five alive. That's huge, man. I, I look for a second. They might have lost a body, but no, nobody died. And it looks like Dynasty might have lost their inside guy. And Ryan Greenspan getting checked out by the referee. No, he, oh, referee's still checking him out. He's clean. So four bodies alive. Uh, Dynasty all the survived way. the break. And now Oliver Lang, look at this. All the way to the side of the field. Drew, see, does he know he doesn't know he's there, Drew does he? Templeton and Brandon Short is going to come around and take him out. And they're going to both beg for a penalty. Good move by Drew Templeton. So that should slow things down a bit here. Yeah. Two minutes and 14 seconds. And there are still four bodies left alive here for both teams. What a great job by Brandon Short and for Drew Templeton. That's, it's really tough to get that part down that quick. And what a great job by Drew, but he ended up getting taken out by Brandon. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, you know, Ryan Greenspan took that opportunity to get out wide on the snake side. And Oliver Lang got out of the box and into the big Dorito. So it's four on four right now with uh, one minute, 50 seconds left to go in this game. I'll tell you what, Todd, we were hearing chants from the crowd as we were at the commercial break. They were chanting one on one, one on one, and I almost wanted to join him in that chant because <laughs> there's nothing I want to see more than to end this amazing tournament here, the last event of the PSP series in 2014 with some one on ones between Los Angeles Infamous and San Diego Dynasty. That would be amazing. We're a minute and 25 seconds away from that. Oliver Lang and Blake Yarber trying to not make that happen for Dynasty. They want to just take this victory without having to go to those chaotic one on ones. And Blake, 50-yard line on the D side. Here comes Oliver. Oliver in the snake. There's no attack coming from uh, right now for Los Angeles Infamous. I think Infamous wants to go to those one-on-ones. Once they lost Drew, no offense from them here. So now we are just about at the minute mark. You know, it, it only takes about, once you clear the field, depending on where you're at, maybe 10 seconds to hang that flag less. Yeah. Oh, he shoots across at. the field. Oliver Lang just shot the corner guy, Matty. So, wow, Infamous is going to sleep on the snake over here, letting Oliver Lang get all the way past the 50-yard line. 
And though 45 seconds left, so, you know, Infamous needs to dig deep here and tighten it up, but they lose Blake Yarber. Oh, so yeah, Dynasty loses Blake, and and right now... Kevin Rudolph also getting shot. There are only two players left alive right now, three for San Diego Dynasty on the field. So are we going to see one-on-ones, or can Dynasty take down the last two players for Los Angeles Infamous? It's just Brad McCurley and Bobby Aviles left alive. 21 seconds, Bobby Avilas, Brad McCurley locking off that Dorito side. I just Bobby Avilas locking off the snake. Here comes Ryan Greenspan, 14 seconds. Oliver Lang coming down the highway. Gonna look to get Brad McCurley, gonna shoot Brad McCurley in the back. Bobby Avilas shoots. Major and Oliver penalty Lang on Oliver gets Lang. a major penalty. Ryan Greenspan gets pulled. Bobby Avilas is off to the races. He's gonna shoot Tyler Harmon. That's, that, is that a swing point still? As time expires, everyone is screaming. And the crowd is going wild. Bobby Avilas has the flag. There's a billion referees in there. Everyone's screaming. The crowd is chanting one-on-ones. Todd is chanting one-on-ones. I want to see one-on-ones. But I don't know. When you see that penalty there, we got to find out what the deal is. And it looks like the refs are trying to sort it out. I hate seeing that. I hate seeing major penalties to end games. I'd much rather see one-on-ones. But that's what happened out there. And you know, so right now, there's a, I've never seen a conference. I, have you guys ever seen a conference like this with that many players and that many referees and coaches, everyone out there right now? Here comes Rusty Glaze, Greg Posey, a coach for uh, Infamous is out there right now. They are all arguing, trying to figure it out. You know, wow. I think, Where did who you know go? what? <laughs> Honestly, Oliver Lang runs down, gets shot by Bobby, continues to shoot Bobby. But Oliver Lang, by earning that penalty, Bobby Avilas probably should still have to have gotten pulled off the field. And then Bobby Avilas took off to shoot Tyler Harmon. I don't think Tyler Harmon would have had enough time to yeah. grab that flag and run and hang it. Mm. But Dynasty has a chance of getting this point right let's, here. Let's look at it right here. Here's Oliver Lang. He pushes forward. I think he might have got caught right there, but I don't know if that's a major penalty. Oh, like that's if, definitely if, a major penalty. You think so? Yeah, Bobby shot him. You can see Bobby come out. If you rewind it, you can see it in slow motion. Well, that's, Bobby that's, comes out, and he shoots Oliver while Oliver is still shooting Brad McCurley. Uh, and, and you can see there, and yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe you're right, man. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a little biased right now because I really want to see one-on-ones. If we get cheated out of one-on-ones because of a major penalty here, yeah. I think we might have a riot on our hands. Yeah, let's take that back. Let's take that back real quick. Yeah, if we can see that replay again. Let's see that. Re I think you might be right, Todd. I'm just a little excited here about the one-on-one -on -one potential, and I think that yeah, I don't know. Tyler might be just trying to sell it. The referees are still talking it over. Everyone's arguing over there. So here's the Bobby The coaches Avilas. are in there. So yeah, there's Bobby Avilas. He and shoots Oliver. And then Oliver tries to take out, yeah, Bobby. So yeah, I mean, it looks like that might have been a major there. Yeah, so Oliver definitely gets a major right there. And Bobby is alive. The question is, if Oliver put paint on Bobby, then Bobby would be eliminated. Greenspan gets pulled. Tyler Harmon's the last one. We couldn't have asked for a more awesome finish than one-on-ones. I'm going to be so incredibly frustrated and angry if we don't get one-on-ones. You're right, though, Todd. That that looked like Oliver got that major penalty legit. Yeah, but yeah. That he would, definitely got the major penalty. That's going to pull out. Is, the question is, is Greenspan left alive to pull? But here's the, here's the thing, too, and I've been in this situation before. Sometimes it's the ref's discretion. You know, like if it's that close, you know, a ref can leave Bobby Avilas in in that situation. You know, like if it's a bang bang, you know, sometimes they got to pull him out. A ref can leave Bobby Avilas in if he knows that Oliver Lang was clearly shot first. If he so chooses to wipe him off, then Bobby Avilas has every right to go running towards that flag. But if not, uh, you know, Bobby running after he was eliminated shooting Tyler Harmon. I think that's why they might have thrown the minor penalty, but I really don't think that Tyler Harmon would have had time to run that flag in with the less than six seconds, because by the time Bobby and Tyler ran into each other at the flag station, the horn went off. I agree. One-on-ones. That's what I'm saying. Let's one hear it for on some one-on-ones. On ones. Do you want to see some one-on-ones? We want to hear some one-on-ones. Yeah, I want to see some one-on-ones. I almost want to start dropping, I want to drop my headset and go and see what the crowd thinks about it, but I already know what they think about it, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, as it stands, we don't know what's going on. They're still trying to figure it out, but pretty much anyone who's everyone that's involved in the hey. in this game and what happens, we have the head referees out there, we got the guys in charge of referees, we got both coaches, multiple players out there, everyone trying to figure it out. Hey, cats both and dogs teams. is talking. Both yeah. these teams are already in the champions division. Exactly. 
exactly. For this is all for year. pride right now. This is all for pride. Let's go to one on ones. Right? Let's duke it out. It's a five five game. It's been back and what forth. Tied what up. a better way to, to What end a better it way off. to end the twenty fourteen World wish, Cup. I wish I had a, a radio right now. I would be yelling at the referees. Are we at Buffalo care. Wild Wings? I don't care what you saw. <laughs> Make it go to one on ones. Call in the Buffalo Wild right, Wings one on ones. Hey, I just heard it right now. Call down from the field unless uh, unless the booth is messing with me, it looks nice. like we are going to one on ones. Somebody in the VIP booth hit the one on one yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings button. Let's hear it for one on ones, <laughs> right? What a way to end the year. It's so fitting. This has been an insanely chaotic year here in the PSP. So it looks like everyone is going to get what they want here. And who, who are they going to send out? So let's break down the O time, the shootout matches. So basically, in those one on ones, it's five 60-second one-on-ones. The first two points win. So the big question right now is who is going to send? Who is which each team, each team going to send out for this man? Uh, this is going to be insane. Let's get the ref update right now for CJ Traub. So we have multiple penalties on that play. First penalty is a major assess to number two for Dynasty playing on obvious. That body was assessed. That penalty was assessed with a live body. Second penalty was playing on or sorry interference on number two for Dynasty. We did have a body assessed for that. Since all bodies were dead and time ran out, we will go to one-on-ones. Yes, we are going to one-on-ones right now, everybody. This is what we wanted to see. The crowd is going crazy right now. We couldn't ask for a better way. I, I can barely hear myself think right hey, now. And this is what I like to see right here. Oliver Lang, the man who got the penalty, Arguably the best player in the world coming out to play one-on-ones first for San Diego Dynasty. And it looks the like man, matching up against him Bobby is... Bobby Avilas for LA Infamous. Can't ask for a better one-on-one -on -one player, a more hardcore, more clutch player. Number 32, Bobby Avilas for LA Infamous. Hey, and Todd also, check it out, man. This is the battle that just went down. Oliver Lane got that major penalty. This is Bobby's redemption moment right here. Bobby Avilas is getting chanted up. All his boys from South America right now pumping him up. So it's Bobby Avilas versus Oliver Lang for this first one-on-one. -on -one. Again, it's a race to two. It's a 60-second, one-minute, one-on-one battle here. And everyone is on their feet here at the Fantasy of Flight for the last game of the day. And this is the best game we have seen all tournament long. So is it going to be? And it looks like it's Oliver Lang, Yosh Rao, Tyler Harmon, and Ryan Greenspan taking the field for one-on-ones. We do not know who else is out there right now for Infamous, but it is Bobby Avila standing by himself, ready to roll and play this one-on-one -on -one game here against Oliver Lang. Now, is the sun going to come into effect? I mean, you see on the screen right there, Oliver Lang, Dynasty on your left, Bobby Villas on your right. The sun is starting to set here. That's a good at, question, Chris. I think only flight. if they go to, if you're on the D side and you're and the guy's in the snake, then yes, it's definitely going to play a factor here. Another note, in the European uh, tournament series, Oliver Lang has already won a one-on-one -on -one championship. So, you know, we've seen Oliver in situations like this before on the field and, uh, and Dynasty sending, sending their Titan out here. Arguably the best player ever and the 2013 Top Gun Award winner. Is coming out here, and we're about to get rolling. I think we got, well, the clock stopped, so I don't know what the holdup is. I think it might just be to build the dramatic tension up. I'm excited. We're on our feet here in the announcer's booth. The VIPs on their, on their feet right now, and the entire stands is on their feet, so we couldn't ask for a better finish. They're going to chrono them in right now, and then we're going to get rolling. All right, so we got more infamous players taking the field. It looks like Damian Ryan comes out, of course, and it looks like is that Zach Wake comes out. Love to see this. This is you're sending your heroes out right now. You know, it's like who are the best guys you've got? That's who you're sending out, or who you who you feel. So here are the comparison graphics right now. Oliver Lang and Bobby Avilas coming in here to play this one-on-one -on -one shootout matchup. Both these both these guys are seasoned vets. They both play in Europe. They both play. They could teach clinics all over. I mean, you couldn't ask for Betty got better guys right now for Infamous. And uh, it's interesting that they didn't send Damien out first, the feeling that, hey, you know, Bobby feels like he just got cheated by Oliver. All right, bam, throw him out there. Let's see who wins this first one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, I cannot wait to get this cracking right now. Everybody on their feet in the stands. Clock is running, VIP, guys. Yeah. On the sidelines. Clock's running, boys. Here we are. We are under 25 seconds before the start of this first one-on-one. -on -one. Brandon Short also wait. Brandon waiting, waiting in the wings. Ooh, wow, this is great, man. What amazing finish to 2014 season. All right, there we go. Set just seconds. Six seconds, five, four, 
And we are about to go. Bobby Avilas, Oliver Lang for the Challengers Division title here. Oliver Lang cuts to the big Dorito. So does Bobby Avilas. Bobby Avilas to the tall cake. Oliver Lang up to the pin on the snake side. Avilas comes up over the top, attacks the small temple, tries to get a jump shot on Oliver Lang. Oliver Lang pounding paint over the top of the temple. Bobby Avilas in a crouch. Oliver Lang over the top of the pin. Bobby Avilas just chilling out right now, waiting for his snapshot. Oliver Lang is just doing nothing but dumping pods of paint towards Bobby Avilas. Bobby Avilas just chilling, waiting for his shot. Getting put in by Oliver, back and forth. Comes over the top, comes left, comes right, comes over the top. He puts Oliver in. Oliver has to submit, and now Bobby's got the advantage. And now Bobby's got a load, but Bobby drops his gun to do it. 17 seconds. Here comes Oliver Lang on the temple, moves into Bobby's mirror. Oliver oh, he gets, gets a, a clipped shot. Bobby. Oliver Lang steps up for San Diego Dynasty to put the first point on the board and runs it in with just five seconds remaining. Stomps the flag into the ground. Triumphant Oliver Lang here. One point for Dynasty. It's a race to two. Wow. Woo. Getting the chills up here, man. That was good right now. Great shot by Oliver Lang. Clipping the left shoulder of Bobby Avilas. From LA Infamous. Well, boys, you can tell, look, Oliver's played a lot of one-on-ones. Bobby has too, but Oliver comes into that one-on-one, -on -one and his, his strategy there was just dump a ton of pods, try to get Bobby out of his game. Bobby was just waiting for Oliver to get off of him, waiting for a shot, head checked a couple times, and then Bobby came out, then he was on an Oliver for a little second, but then Oliver ended up making that move, and that was the difference. Well, he ran out of, Bob, Bobby actually, Bobby had the advantage for a second, but he forgot, he forgot to load. He forgot to load, and then had to load real quick, dropped his gun, gave Oliver the chance to get Well, hey, Oliver did his work. That's it. He drops it out there. That's the last we're going to see of Oliver Lang for this season uh, with that one-on-one -on -one victory. So now it's Tyler Harmon matching up against Drew Templeton here. So now they choose to go to the D side. Coming towards that snake side, though, is Drew Templeton. So that's a smart move, though, by Tyler Harmon because, again, worried about that the glare coming off the lake as the sun beginning its descent towards the western sky. And now, Drew Templeton in that big Dorito comes out low. Tyler Harmon moves into the Dorito one, tries to come out low on the inside. Drew Templeton high on the outside, makes a move over to the tall cake on the snake side. Under but, 30 seconds left to go. But that was a good move though, I think by Tyler Harmon to force Drew Templeton to try to come here towards the snake side. But then again, with the way that the sun is sitting, you know, the way that Drew's are looking at it, really not playing too much of a factor until they completely switch the field here. So now Drew comes back towards the D side of the field. Again, you only get uh, 60 seconds. And now with eight seconds left to go, I don't think that we, are, unless somebody can get a shot here now, Drew coming out wide. And I don't think that we're going to see a victor here, so we're going to go to the next set. Next set. Oh, he did get a shot did he in, get on, a shot in on him. He did, but he ran out of time. But he ran out of time. So good job by Drew Templeton to get a shot on Tyler Harmon. And so right now, Dynasty has that advantage. So if we go through the one-on-ones and Infamous can't score a point to tie it up here in this race to two, well, then that means that Dynasty will be the Challengers Division World I Cup think winners. Infamous and just Rochambeau in the start station to see who was going to go out. Are you sure? I think so. They rock, paper, scissors to see I, who was going to go? I think they did. Oh, that's awesome. That's typical infamous fashion right there. <laughs> so, that's so true. Well, I think that the next guy coming out here to play the one-on-one -on -one is Yosh Rao. So we have seen Yosh Rao, just like all the guys on Dynasty, win a lot of one-on-ones over the years. Also, Yosh Rao's specialty is pulling off low-body situations and winning gunfights. So, you know, you want to go, you, hey, this is what, it, yeah, you want a gunfighter for this spot right here. So. But he is matching up against Damian Ryan. So, you know, arguably the best player on Infamous, no, Damian Ryan. Jason Bornstein. Yeah, no, you're right. The field right. It now. is. It is Jason Bornstein. Sorry. So we're gonna have to switch that graphic here. And then Jason Bornstein getting kind of a bad start there, trying to at the last second deciding to go to the stand-up Dorito. Oliver Lang doing the same exact thing that Tyler Harmon did. Goes to the D side of the field. Yosh Rao. I'm sorry. All. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yosh Rao going to the D side of the field. Now rolling his gun over the top. Damian Ryan moves up a little bit. Jason Bornstein, Yosh Rao both up over the top of their bunkers, trying to shoot blind yeah. spots. Here comes Jason Bornstein. Bornstein. Now all the way to the center A, Jason Bornstein now head checking towards the D side. Looks like he can't quite figure out exactly where he wants to go. He's going to go to the flag. Yeah. And so Yosh Rao. I think he remembered there's a bunch of bounce shots in yeah, the Yeah, I was a. just going to yeah. say that, Todd. And uh, yeah, so he, he backed up out of there. He's also, again, you got to get that flag and hang it. 15 seconds now. Bornstein is going to dip out low, get to the stand-up. 
Oh, oh shot. He's got eight he's seconds. Got eight Can seconds he go to run it in? Flag. Is he going to get he gonna him gonna in have time? time? Five seconds. Does Jason Bornstein have the wheels for it? Two seconds. Yes. Jason Bornstein. Get it in. Look what at a that. Pickup. What a clutch. Jason Bornstein to shoot Yosh Rao over the top in the goggles and hang the flag with 0.5 seconds left on the clock. That was so gnarly. We are all knotted up at one. Clutch performance by Jason Bornstein to get out there and shoot the gunfighting beast that is Yosh Rao and then with just barely enough time to dive and get that point win. So we are tied up at one right now. That was gnarly. Awesome. What a heads up play. Infamous coming back one to one, tying wow, it up. Wow, it doesn't get any closer than this. So who's the next to go? And it looks like it is now going to be Damian. D Damian Ryan pacing out there, waiting for his chance, just chomping at the bit. This is when you bring in your closers right now. Alex Fragey, he is a masterful one on one player, but Damian Ryan, arguably the best player on Infamous right now, he is their closer. He is Mr. Clutch for LA Infamous. Who's it going to be? Fragey, Ryan, all knotted up at one. Next person to get a flag hang wins this one. Alex Fragey out here to the snake side cake. Damian Ryan in that back center, big Dorito. 45 seconds left to go. Fragey with gun dominance up over the top. He's doing that same thing that both Yosh and Oliver has, have tried to do here. Heavy gun up, rolling the gun, loading pod after pod, not stopping the pressure. Damian Ryan forced to just hide in there. And so Alex Fragey is just gonna keep rolling his gun. He hasn't moved. Damian Ryan stuck. Can't get out of that back bunker here. And you know, we know about this bounce shot from that cake into the big Dorito. Damian Ryan can't come out too far on the left side. He gets out, he gets into the cake. Gonna get himself a little bit better position. Alex Fragey now attacks up to the temple. Damian Ryan in the cake. Here comes Alex Fragey on the advance. He's gonna grab the flag. He's gonna make the move on Damian. Oh, and looks like they're gonna trade, trade out. it out. But hey, Alex Frazee, the aggressor there in that one, kind of dominating Damien a little bit. Damien realized, though, that uh, he wasn't getting shot at. He needed to make a move, and he did pick up Alex Frazee, so. This is it. This is it right here. And Dynasty, with their last body, who are they gonna send out? It's gonna be Brandon Short taking on Zach Wake. Very interesting, we did not see Ryan Greenspan yeah, uh, maybe Ryan Greenspan's knee might be hurt, but I'm really surprised that we haven't seen Ryan Greenspan. How did he not come out One of the for best shots in the game. That's really shocking. So look at this replay there. Frazier, the aggressor, grabbing the flag. And was and Damien, though, picked the exact right moment to come out of there and trade out with, with, uh, with Alex. So Alex, I thought for a second, might have get the drop on him, but Damien ends up trading out. So nice job by both those guys. And so now it's all tied up at one. Dallas Finals MVP, Zach Wake. Can he come with some heroics again? Finally making it back into the champions division. Zach Wake will help win that first tournament for him. Can he have some more magic here yeah, that for San Diego Dynasty? And that graphic was wrong. Right now it's Zach Wake, not Bobby Avilas, out there right now for Los Angeles Infamous. Here comes Brandon Short for San Diego Dynasty there on the left. And here comes Zach Wake. Zach Wake goes towards that snake side of the field. And now kind of coast to coast shot here. Much different tactics for both these guys. 35 seconds left on the clock. Zach Wake sitting in the 50 snake. Brandon Short in Dorito one. Zach Wake, feel you're familiar with this snake bunker. Knows where the shots are. It, Brandon looks, like Short. Hit, it looks like he hit him on the wrist. He did. Oh, he did. Zach Wake shoots Brandon Short. The MVP of the Dallas Finals is going to come through for LA Infamous once again. And he is going to run that flag in. And LA Infamous in a one on one overtime shootout is going to take it to San Diego Dynasty and win the Challenger Division Final 2014 World Cup. What an amazing performance by Zach Wake. Chooses to go to the snake side and steps up huge to take this victory against San Diego Dynasty. We thought at first, man, with Oliver Lane coming out and setting the tempo, that they were going to take it. But no, Infamous just refusing to say die, maintaining their tenacity the entire way through this one-on-one -on -one shootout. And a big, huge congratulations to Zach Wake. What a redemptive moment for him. And it's such a tough year for everyone from Infamous. But not only were they able to get back into the Champions Division by, win, uh, by getting into the, uh, to the finals, being one of the top two teams in the Challengers Division, but Zach Wake, like just Todd like was saying, he was the MVP. You know, Wake also had a, a, a major penalty in this game, which really kind of changed the tide for a second. So, hey, man, don't be perfect, be clutch. And that right there, Zach Wake's performance here, man, that was the definition of clutch.
Yeah, way to come back at Infamous. I mean, it went down to the whole five players for that. Uh, we had one stalemate. We had one shootout between Damian Ryan and Alex Frazee. Let's listen to the pits right now. How happy are these guys? Thanks for the help, guys. Yeah, so a triumphant Los Angeles Infamous here in the Challengers Division, the best game, honestly, that we saw the entire tournament. As, uh, and honestly, we've never in the history of the PSP since the uh, the since we've had the one-on-one -on -one shootout, we've never ever had a one-on-one -on -one shootout go that far. So that is the the longest game we've ever seen here in the PSP. No game's ever gone this far, past overtime into one-on-one -on -one shootouts, and this far into one-on-one -on -one shootouts. And what a way to cap off the 2014 season. Yeah, and what uh, a way to end the 2014 PSP season hey. out here with LA Infamous defeating San Diego Dynasty. Both these teams will be in the champions bracket next year, but, but yeah, what an amazing finish. Todd, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and these guys coming out after a well-fought battle back and forth. Again, that's the closest game that we've ever seen in, in the history of this league because, you know, one-on-ones didn't come out until uh, a couple of years, until last year, and, you know, and we never saw one go this far. So it, it couldn't get any more evenly matched than we just saw. Wow, what a, yeah, absolutely, Todd. What an amazing end to the season. Yeah, my hat's off to both these teams, you know, for the effort that they put in. But, man, <laughs> wow. This is probably becoming the biggest rivalry in paintball right now. Yeah. Well, let's check in with Lauren Kelly here. And you got to give, I mean, is Zach Wake the MVP of that game? He did just win the game for Los Angeles Infamous. I'm going to give it to him. MVP Zach Wake. Let's, check, let's listen in. What an insane last match here at World Cup to make infamous our champs of the challengers bracket going into those one on ones, which we haven't really seen from on the pro field here. Were you feeling pressure? You were the last guy lined up for that one on one. No, honestly, I didn't think it was going to get that far. Um, we got some pretty stellar individual, you know, one on one players and uh, I was just there if they needed me and they called my number and I got it done for the team. That was, that was about all I could do. You know? So when it did come down to you and that buzzer went off, were there any nerves or staying calm? I mean, no, it's just uh, when you prepare the way we do and you put in the time and effort, you know, you got what it takes. So you just got to go out there and execute. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. I will go let you celebrate with your team. You guys played so hard. Infamous first place. Dynasty versus Infamous is always an incredible match. Thank you so much. You. And that's all I got for you here on the sidelines. The definition of redemption, Zach Wake, man, unbelievable performance by him. Uh, you know, he's fought through a lot of adversity in his career, been on a lot of different teams, but, you know, finding a home. And at first infamous with Travis Lemansky was unsure whether or not to bring back Zach Wake to the fold because it had been, there'd been so much rough water, uh, but they decided to bring him back because of the improvements that Zach Wake had made, mostly on the mental side of things. And just for him to come out, and not only be the MVP of their win uh, at the beginning of the year, but then also the guy that takes them, you know, that takes it home here at the World Cup to win the Challengers division here. It's just, I'm just so proud of that guy because, again, it's been a long road for Zach Wake as we're seeing all these, uh, all these highlights here from the closest game, the closest match of the entire tournament through 36 games that we've had on this main field in three days. And you see, there was that <laughs> last crazy last point where Oliver got that major penalty against Bobby Avilas, and this was uh, Bobby Avilas there in that one-on-one -on -one where Oliver took him out and shot him in. So I know that you see Oliver running that flag in. He only had five seconds left when, that, when they hung that flag, too. Yeah, and there was Josh Rao getting taken out. There's Jason Bornstein with the big win coming through for LA Infamous. Dying Great pickup. In. Coming in, here's the trade out between Alex Frazier and Damian Ryan. Two big closers for San Diego Dynasty end up trading it out and leaving it in the hands of Brandon Short and Zach Wake. And Zach Wake with some masterful one-on-one -on -one play right here. Yeah, I, I, you I, see I, Zach Wake right there on the slow motion replay. Winning the game for Los Angeles Infamous, your 2014 Challengers Division Champions. Hey, good job, guys. My alma mater. Yeah, that's, uh, wow, what an amazing moment for Infamous. It's been a long season for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward hey. to next year. <laughs> Start well, finish well. You know, it was rough in between, but at the end of the day, they're back in the Champions Division to start 2015, and, you know, they got to be happy with their performance out here. So, congratulations, Los Angeles Infamous.
Yeah, so uh, closing moments of our show here. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we do have an end-of-day highlight reel from the games that we saw before we sign off for the year. And, um, and it, it is, it's just been an amazing 2014 here. And uh, just really so proud of all the winners here today and everyone that fought so hard in order to try to win uh, a, a, to win the World Cup across all of the, all of the divisions. So, you know, the day started out here. Uh, as we saw Baltimore Revo, uh, the underdogs, take down Houston Heat, and what a great game that was. Yeah, I mean, that's going to send them down to uh, the Challengers division to start off the year next year. That's going to hurt. You know, and great play across the board. Even the divisional yeah. games were amazing. This is a, a Chicago Aftershock in their game that they played here against San Diego Dynasty. Uh, the Chicago Aftershock with the Carl Murkowski one of the only guys to get those coast-to-coast -coast runs along with Alexander Burnikoff. And here was Bobby Avilas streaking through the middle, getting two Seattle Thunder players. Got to stab out Brandon Morales. And here's Brad McCurley getting bunkered out by Matt Chim in the snake in that semifinal matchup with Seattle Thunder. Yeah, Seattle Thunder, though, for next year, uh, some Matt Chim in, during the lunch break, and he was disappointed, but, you know, smile on his face as always because I really think Thunder could contend uh, next season with that new lineup that they have. And then here's Fedorov is going to do the shuffle as Zach Yakimek came down the sidelines to bunker him out. Art Chaos blasted Tampa Bay damage in the pro champion finals. There's Dosi Do action with Alexander Bierdnikov and Jason Edwards right at the end of that. Pro Champions final, Lukas and Fedorov coming through there at the end. So here's Timmy Probst coming up. Battling it out with Alexander Bierdnikov, but really nothing going on yeah. for Tampa Bay damage in that final game. And there's Lil Malloy, Alexander Bierdnikov with the celebration. Uh, Todd, Chris, you guys have watched a lot of paintball. Uh, I've watched a ton of paintball. I can't remember the last time I saw a whooping that bad, period, no. let alone in the final matchups. I mean, there was not one second of that game where Damage had control of it. It was an incredibly impressive performance. Yeah, I think the wind just came out of their sails halfway. When it was 4-0, four, 5-0, four to zero, five to zero, they were just like, you know, what, what are you going to do at that point? Uh, you know, they, they fought a hard fight, but, you know, unfortunately was not able to capitalize on it. Yeah, and Damage had such a great end to the year, and again, hats off to them. There was that Ryan Greenspan coming down there and maybe again we did not see Ryan Greenspan in the one-on-ones which is pretty shocking so I'm guessing maybe he might have tweaked his knee again which would kind of be scary so I hope that's not the case yeah. uh, and there was that penalty situation yeah. here major on Oliver I think they called the interference on Oliver but it was actually the interference on Ryan Greenspan during that last little so uh, Ryan and Bobby and then every ref on the field converge on that and it took a while to kind of sort things out and then we went to those one-on-ones and there was Zach Wake, the hero of the day. And what a better, it couldn't be have a better tournament or a better time to step up. But that's, but hey, but when you have, uh, you know, a, a reformed mental attitude like Zach Wake does, that's what's possible. You know, you talk to that guy and he has just, you know, matured so much over the years. Came up as that young, brash kid coming up out of the middle of nowhere and not a lot of paintball. And I mean, he, you know, obviously not truly from the middle of nowhere as far as paintball is concerned, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, just can't say enough good things about both Dynasty and Los Angeles Infamous. But, again, the hero for the day is definitely Zach Wake. So what an amazing, Todd, like you were saying, end of the season here. And, uh, and what an amazing end to the World Cup, really. I mean, it was the paintball gods that shined upon us finally, I think because of all the torture that the paintball gods gave us at the, <laughs> at the beginning of the year with the freezing cold weather in Dallas and then the monsoons that hit uh, both the Mid-Atlantic Open and the Chicago Open and the heat from West Coast Open. And we came here three days of pretty much, as far as Florida is concerned, perfect weather and a lot. And, and Sunday, I mean, wow, anyone that missed this one, definitely tell your friends that if they want to watch 12 amazing games of paintball, this was the day. This was probably one of the best days that, uh, that this is one of the best days that I've ever seen here. So, um, man, and also, you know, we have, we're going to have a long off season, but we will have all the different, and this could be potentially one of the craziest off seasons <laughs> that we've ever seen as far as player, player changes and, uh, and, and teams. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. But again, also, thank you so much. It's all about you guys, man. We're up here doing this because, you know, we want to give you guys the best show possible and highlight the, you know, uh, the best players in the world. That's what this is about. So thank you. On behalf of everyone at PBA and here at the PSP, we thank you so much for your support. We, and again, we very much look forward to seeing you guys next season. We're going to try to keep pushing this 
PBA project as far as we possibly can. But that's up to you guys, man. Please help us spread the word. You hear me say it all the time. Spread the paintball gospel. I believe in it, though. I think this sport is an amazing thing for the world. It really, you know, exercises demons and makes you a strong person. And it's such a good time, you know. So uh, maybe we'll see you guys at Old Town, Old Town tonight. I think we're going to have Infamous here with Lauren Kelly uh, to celebrate their victory. Um, not sure if we have that yet, but uh, but yeah, man, it's 2015 season is going to be crazy, and who knows what's going to happen? As we've seen in the off seasons uh, in the past couple years, things have got pretty intense as far as playing, going to different teams, and it's like a soap opera, uh, but with guns, um, yeah. which is it should be crazy. A lot of potential rumors flying around right now. Not exactly sure what's going to happen. If you want to find out what we might know, you're going to have to go to paintballaccess.com and tune in to the breakdown because as soon as we find out everything that's happened, we're going to be able to let you know first. Yeah, so uh, just a couple more moments before we get to uh, Lauren Kelly with Infamous, and then we close the day out here. Uh, actually, it looks like I think Infamous might be going to go on their own celebration. They're already so. at Sizzler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so thank you guys so much, man. It's been an amazing season. Looking forward to an amazing 2015 season. So, again, stay tuned for updates and all the player changes. Yeah, again, lots of rumors flying around here at World Cup. Obviously, you don't have enough time to break it down, so you're going to have to stay tuned as things progress forward. But, again, our giant, thank you very much uh, for all the support and, uh, and, all, and all the guys that have been supporting the PBA project. We'll see you guys in 2015.